हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर एम एन गुप्ता एमेरिटस प्रोफेसर एट डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बायोकेमिकल इंजीनियरिंग एंड बायो टेक्नोलॉजी एट इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी दिल्ली टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक ऑन द मॉड्यूल ग्लाइकोलिपिड्स एंड वैक्सीस from paper structure and function of biomolecules too the word glycolipids is unlikely to produce any excitement of the kind let us say associated with recombinant dna yet we will see that none of the biological molecules are unimportant none are redundant we will discuss how simple glycolipids can give rise to inositol phosphates which are so critical in signal construction so the objectives of this module are to learn about phosphatidyl inositol to understand the role of inositol derivatives obtained from these in signal construction processes and also to learn about cerebrocytes and gangliosides two other classes of complex lipids and finally to learn about vaxes both their structure and of course their biological role so the concept map consists of these lipids and their derivatives glycolipids and vaxes inositol derivatives glycosyl glycerides cerebrocytes and gangliosides all which come under the broad category of glycolipids glycolipids again i are diverse in stru structure and function both glyco and lipid components contribute to this diversity phosphatidyl moiety simple glycerol moiety and sphingosine are different components of these lipids the carbohydrate part can be a single sugar disaccharide trisaccharide or oligosaccharides apart from the usual monosaccharides glycolipids also contain their amine derivatives which are glucosamine and galactosamine units sialic acids also called nuraminic acids are also found in glycosphingolipids which are called gangliosides finally we will also towards the end look at the vexes and their diverse functions the simplest glycolipids are those that contain inositol the structure of the inositol is shown in the figure the two isomeric inositols are meso inositol and scalitol meso inositol is more commonly called myo inositol this compound is widely distributed in both plants and animals it was found in boar semen at the concentration of 1 g per 100 ml scalitol has been detected in dog fish liver and cartilage as well as in many plants these compounds have been known for a long time since the days of emil fischer since around 1940s myo inositol is also found in microorganisms conversion of glucose to myo inositol in yeast 
was shown way back in 1957 and its catabolism in acetobacter was also investigated around the same time. Phosphatidyl inositols also have been known for a long time. These were found in animal tissues, plant sources such as wheat germ and soya bean and in bacteria in the period 1949 to 1960. These were earlier classified in terms of inositol derivatives which were obtained upon their hydrolysis. Inositol monophosphate or diphosphoinositols were obtained from these lipids. Some also contained galactose and arabinose as well. Phosphatidyl inositol 4,5-bisphosphate is a phospholipid found in biomembranes. It is formed from phosphatidyl inositol which in turn arises from CDP diacylglycerol and inositol reaction. The bisphosphate called PIP2 whose structure is shown here is involved in a major signal transduction mechanism. This pathway is initiated by activation of an enzyme which is a phospholipase C and is specifically called polyphosphoinositide diesterase or simply phosphoinositidase. This enzyme is activated in response to a hormone like serotonin binding to cellular receptor. The enzyme action liberates inositol 145-triphosphate IP3 and diacylglycerol. IP3 has a short life of only few seconds due to phosphatases, stripping off all the phosphate and producing inositol. Alternatively, IP3 can also be further phosphorylated to 1345-tetrakis phosphate which is called IP4. IP4 then generates another isomer of original IP3. This isomer generated by a phosphatase is inositol 134-triphosphate. Inositol 134-triphosphate is also converted to inositol by a phosphatase. This phosphatase is strongly inhibited by lithium ion at a millimolar concentration. It is believed that the therapeutic benefit of lithium ion in the treatment of manic depression disorders is due to its inhibition of this phosphatase. PIP2 generally has arachidonate at C2 position of glycerol. We have already learned about the importance of this C20 PUFA as a precursor of eicosanoids, prostaglandines and thrombuxanes. Phosphoinositide cascade of signal transduction in fact mediates diverse metabolic processes. These are listed here. As you can see, this is as varied as glycogenolysis in liver cells to visual transduction in invertebrate photoreceptors. It was Michael Berridge who discovered that IP3 is responsible for a quick release of calcium ion from its intracellular stores. These stores are in endoplasmic reticulum, smooth muscle cells and sarcoplasmic reticulum. It is this calcium ion which is now present in the cytosol which triggers various processes like glycogenolysis and smooth muscle contraction. IP3 at submicromolar concentration opens calcium channels in the endoplasmic and sarcoplasmic reticulum. This is how the quick rise in cytoplasmic calcium ion concentration happens. Calcium ion in turn is an important intracellular messenger for many biological processes. Its transport systems ensure 
that most of the times calcium concentration in cytosol is 0.1 micromolar. The extracellular calcium ion concentration is much higher. It is necessary that cells keep calcium ion concentration low. From our studies of metabolism, we do know that many phosphate esters play an important role here. Inorganic phosphate is an important species. Given the low solubility product of calcium phosphate, it will be undesirable to have high calcium ion concentration in the cytosol. The considerable difference in normal intracellular and extracellular concentrations makes it possible to quickly increase the cytosolic calcium ion concentration once the calcium channel is opened in response to the presence of the IP3. We see here how biology exploits a simple concept in chemistry of solubility product to design finely controlled metabolic processes. We also see that in inorganic species, calcium cation is extremely important and dictates functions of more complicated molecules and processes. Calcium cation can coordinate with multiple ligands. Aspartate and glutamate side chains and even the peptide bond carbonyls are good ligands via their oxygen. So it binds protein very well. In fact, eukaryotic cells keep a control on the concentration of the calcium cations by sensing it via calmodulin, a protein which acts as a calcium ion detector, calcium ion concentration detector. Plants contain glycosyl glycerides. These are generally mono or digalactosyl derivatives of diglycerides. The one of the diglyceride shown is a glycolipid found in chloroplasts. These glycosyl diglycerides of leaves are rich in linolenic acid. Hence, the these green leaves are a good source of this PUFA. A sulfolipid found widely distributed in plant chloroplasts is a sulfonic acid derivative of 6 deoxyglucosyl diglyceride. Apart from plant chloroplasts, this glycolipid is also present in chromatophores of photosynthetic bacteria. This indicates its importance in photosynthesis. Some simple compounds formed from sugars and glycerols are also known. As these are soluble in organic solvents, these can be classified as glycolipids. Alternatively, these may be viewed as carbohydrate derivatives. Red marine algae, iridae laminoridos, contain alpha D galactopyranosyl 2 glycerol. Wheat flour contains beta D galactopyranosyl 1 glycerol. Please note that fatty acids are absent in these simple glycolipids. Let us now switch over to the discussion of a more well known class of glycolipids. Just like the glycerol backbone produces diverse kinds of lipids, many lipids are produced which use sphingosine as a basic a scaffold. A sphingosine itself is produced from palmitile coa and serves as precursors. These molecules condense to produce dihydrosphingosine. A dehydrogenase action introduces the double bond to produce a sphingosine. Some important classes of glycolipids are formed from N-acyl sphingosine. 
which is more commonly called ceramides. These glycolipids are sphingomyelin, cerebrocytes, and gangliosides. In cerebrocytes, glucose or galactose is bonded to terminal OH of ceramide. This synthesis occurs by UDP sugars acting as the sugar donor. Please note that wherever sugars are added to a pre existing compound in biochemistry, UDP sugars often act as sugar donors. We have referred to cerebrocytes before. The cerebrocytes of the neural tissues that is in the plasma membranes of their cells generally have galactose. The corresponding cerebrocytes in non-neural tissues have glucose. The term galactolipids or glucolipids or galactocerebrocytes or glucocerebrocytes have been sometimes used. With the amino group of sphingosine already acylated in ceramide, the cerebrocytes have no charge at pH 7 and hence are called neutral glycolipids. The other glycosphingolipids which have two or more sugars, generally D-glucose, D-galactose or N-acetylgalactosamine are called globocytes. Cytolipine H is a ceramide lactoside. Cytolipine K is a globocyte identified in kidney and it turned out to be abundantly present in the human erythrocyte stroma. The sugars present are two galactose molecules, glucose and N acetyl glucosamine linked to ceramide. The nature of the fatty acids in the ceramide portion or the cerebrocyte is also the source of their structural diversity. The cerebrocyte kerosene contains C24 saturated fatty acid called lignoceric acid. Another cerebrocyte phrenocene contains cerebronic acid which is the 2-hydroxy derivative of lignoceric acid. Brain white matter contains galactocerebrocytes which are rich in sulfate ester analog of renosine with C3 of the galactose esterified. Such sulfate esters have been sometimes referred to as sulfatides. The glycosphingolipids found in the nerve tissues and the spleen are gangliocytes. Structurally, gangliocytes have oligosaccharide chain rather than couple of sugar or sugar derivatives as in cerebrocytes. This oligosaccharide chain of course is attached to the ceramide. Other characteristic features of the sugar composition of the gangliocytes is that the oligosaccharide chain contains at least one acetyl glucosamine or N acetyl galactosamine. Also at least one molecule of N acetyl neuraminic acid is present. Gangliocytes are formed by the stepwise, ad stepwise addition of sugars to the cerebrocyte. The N acetyl neuraminic acid is added, though with the CMP derivative acting as its donor. In gangliocytes of the erythrocytes and spleen of horses, instead of N acetyl neuraminic acid, N glycolyl neuraminic acid is present. Both acidic sugars are called sialic acids. Sialic acid is also present in glycoproteins. Many isoforms of some glycoproteins simply differ in number of sialic acid units attached at the end of the oligosaccharide chain. In both glycoproteins and gangliocytes, sialic acid contributes negative charge to the molecules at physiological pH. Glycosphingolipids are the determinants of the blood groups. Johann Thudisham, who discovered sphingolipids, was puzzled about their biological role and apparently he called these substances after the enigmatic sphinx. The major function of the glycosphingolipids in many membranes is structural. 
with the carbohydrate portion imparting them a specific orientation these are present asymmetrically in membranes just like glycoproteins in the immunology section the carl landesteiner abo blood group system will be discussed we do know however that for blood transfusion the rbcs have to be of the compatible group the a and b are surface antigens on erythrocytes these surface antigens are in fact carbohydrate components of the glycosphingolipids thus the person with a type blood group has a different glycosphingolipid on its erythrocytes as compared to the person with the b type blood group these molecules are also part of cellular receptors the ganglioside gm is a receptor for cholera toxin it is also believed that the glycosphingolipids are involved in intercellular communication during growth and development many metabolic disorders relates the catabolism of gangliosides and other glycosphingolipids we have already referred to the tsex disease in which the concentration of the gangliosides gm2 becomes very high as a specific beta n acetyl hexosaminidase which removes n acetyl galactosamine is deficient taste sex disease is usually fatal by the age 3 years of the infant let us now switch over to a discussion on vexes vexes are sometimes called biological vexes to distinguish them from paraffin vexes biological vexes are esters where both alcohols and fatty acids are long chain compounds these long chains result in these vexes being solid with melting points in the range of 60 to 100 degree centigrade these in general are higher than fats these long chains of both acid and alcohol components also make vexes highly hydrophobic to the extent that these are described as a water repellent this property is exploited in nature for various purposes honeycomb provides bees complete shelter from the rain the skin glands of the vertebrates produce vexes which helps the skin and hair to remain soft lubricated and protected from water birds similarly produce vexes from their preen glands to make feathers water repellent the high priced down jackets quilts and other garments filled with feathers of the birds like goose become protective wear against cold snow and rain vexes find large number of applications in the pharma cosmetic and similar industries next time when you see or buy a high quality lip balm look at the ingredients it's very likely contain beeswax a sperm whale is not the only one which exploits vexes to adjust bioinsy do you know flagellates krill and other crustaceans and fishes have low density vexes in their swim bladder or other tissues to obtain desired buoyancy a large number of terrestrial arthropods have vexes on their cuticle surfaces to decrease 
loss of water from their body surfaces. In general, vexes in marine animals contain higher amounts of unsaturated fatty acids and alcohol. However, vexes are quite diverse in their structure depending upon their function in the organism such as plants. The insect vexes generally contain saturated alcohols and fatty acids with their chains consisting of carbons in 12 to more than 20 range. The giant white fly Elirodicus dugesti has carbon chains of up to 30 carbons in both components. In general, vexes have primary alcohols. The lipids of the cuticles of melanopline grasshoppers contain vexes with secondary alcohols though. In plants, cutins and suberine are the lipid polymers present in the hydrophobic layers of cell walls. Cuticle is the cutin-based layer on the epidermis of aerial organs of the plants. This controls the water loss and the movement of gases and solutes. In addition, cuticles contain vexes of C24 to C34 saturated fatty acids and alcohols. Let us look at some more interesting example of vexes. Lenoline is present in the lamb's wool. Carnauba vex is obtained from a Brazilian palm tree and vex from spermaceti oil of whales are industrial products used in ointments, polishes and lotions. A sperm whale is a massive marine. About one third of its weight is due to its head and about 90% of the weight of its head in turn is due to a blubbery part called spermaceti organ. Typically, spermaceti contains up to 18,000 kg of lipids. This lipid material consists of triglycerides and vexes. The presence of a large number of unsaturated fatty acids ensures that this is liquid at 37 degrees centigrade, which is the normal body temperature of resting whale. These whales dive down in deep sea in search of spits on which they feed. At that level, however, water is both colder and densers. Here, whales have to be able to wait quietly and without much swimming for schools of squids to pass by. Whales' physiology results in rapid cooling of the oil to become solid. It actually starts to crystallize even at 31 degrees centigrade during the dive. The bioin density of a whale now matches with the denser water around it and it allows it to stay put there without any swimming. At one time before sperm whales became endangered, the spermaceti oil with vexes in it was a valuable lubricant. Relentless hunting for the vexy oil made them the endangered species. So, we come to the summary. In this module today, we learnt about glycolipids with inositol as sugar. We learnt about glycosyl glycerides. We learnt about cerebrocytes. We learnt about gangliocytes. We also learnt hopefully some very fascinating aspects of vexes and their diverse applications. The dewdrop nestling on a plant leaf is always considered a visual delight. 
Scutin is the waxy material which makes it happen. The role of glycolipids in biomembranes, signal transduction and photosynthesis is well established and that is dealt with in more detail in the respective modules and the papers which deal with biomembrane signal transduction and photo photosynthesis. Glycolipids and waxes are interesting molecules and form part of the diversity of lipids as a class of biological molecules. Thank you.